We believe in high quality public education because it is an economic necessity, an anchor of democracy, a moral imperative, and a fundamental civil right without which none of our other rights can be fully realized. That promise is under pressure and under assault. It's under pressure from social and economic factors outside the classroom and outside the schoolhouse that make it much more difficult to achieve success within our classrooms. Despite all the challenges, our schools are more successful. NAEP scores are improving. High school graduation rates are higher than they've ever been. And, and you know this, the work you've been assigning is more difficult than it's ever been. Ask any parent, which, by the way, we have, and we'll be releasing those poll results today. College attendance is higher than it's ever been, although crushing student debt threatens that achievement. And yet, public education is under assault by those who want, for ideological reasons, to call one of America's greatest accomplishments, public education for all, a failure. They aren't in education to make a difference, those folks. They're in education to make a buck. These, these are the people who don't want you to have the ability to stand together as a union and have a voice in the work you do. These are the people who demand and pursue austerity, polarization, privatization, and deprofessionalization. They say you can cut, 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 and cut some more. And by the way, cut some more. Not invest in public education. And then they argue that public education is failing. Maybe, just maybe, they never learned the difference between cause and effect. <laughs> they fixate on test-based accountability, which makes the bubble test the almighty, rather than enabling us to teach in a way that enriches and engages students and brings joy to learning. They believe in a market system, but our market system says there will be winners and losers. We need all students to have a pathway and a chance to become winners. That, my friends, that's why we're solution-driven unionists. Because we don't just call out what doesn't work, although God knows we've had to do a lot of that this year. We have to demand and demonstrate what does. So for example, we have extended the reach of Share My Lesson. And yes, I am glad it is, and that platform is for teachers and by teachers, and I'm really glad we could provide it to you for free. We proposed a way for all prospective teachers to get ample experience in real classrooms alongside practicing teachers and to meet a high standard like the bar exam or medical exams so that they are ready from day one, not left to sink or swim. We've created a mechanism to make teacher evaluations a serious and constructive process that provide for continuous improvement and feedback. It recasts tenure as a guarantee of fairness and, new, and due process, not as an excuse for managers not to manage and not to cloak incompetence. But I have a plea for those who fixate on how to dismiss teachers. A plea. Fixate instead on how we nurture, support, and keep them. Put a dent in our far too high teacher attrition rates and start valuing great teachers and the great teaching we see every day in classrooms. It really galls me that ours is the only profession where experience is disparaged, not valued. It doesn't happen in medicine, 
It doesn't happen in law, in architecture, or in engineering, and it shouldn't happen in ours. Our insights and our experience matter. By fighting against what doesn't work, by advocating for what does, and by raising our voices, we are solution-driven. But friends, it often feels like an uphill battle. How often have you had to carry out a policy, administer an assessment, or gotten yet another command from on high, and you thought, they just don't get it? <laughs> the people passing laws, calling the shots, are totally out of touch with what my kids need and what it's like in my classroom. Like just last week, the House of Representatives did the uh, they just don't get it moment, <laughs> where the Republican leadership pushed a successor to No Child Left Behind, which they're calling the Student Success Act. Now, I say the Republican leadership because there were some brave Republicans that voted against this. The Student Success Act turns out to be quite the Orwellian title because this bill would starve children and schools of resources and support and does nothing to address the pervasive over-testing that is draining the joy from teaching and learning. Student success? Give me a break. This bill represents a historic abandonment of disadvantaged children. Proclaiming the promise of public education is about fighting for neighborhood public schools that are safe and welcoming places for teaching and learning. Reclaiming the promise is about ensuring that teachers are well prepared, supported, and have the time to collaborate. Reclaiming the promise is about enabling those teachers to teach an engaging curriculum that includes art and music and the sciences. And reclaiming the promise is about ensuring that kids have access to wraparound services to meet their emotional, social, and health needs. And to do this, we need to open our schools, inviting parents, our neighbors, civic, business, faith, and community leaders to see what we do, to see what our kids need. It simply makes sense to bring together people with shared priorities and concerns in the very place we care about so much, the public schools where our children are nurtured and educated. Only by working together can we reclaim the promise of public education.